the High Park neighborhood of Toronto. I'm gonna actually show you where it all first started for my girlfriend at the time, now wife Amy. This is the first apartment we lived in. So I wanna just kind of show you where it all started because I, I think it's helpful to have context of the journey. I've been in this, you know, I've been doing what I'm doing now for 18, 19 years. But as you may or may not know, I started with like three years of poverty line income, really, really struggling. And this is kind of where that journey started at the time. So I'll just give you, uh, give you a bit of a sneak peek. I've actually not been here for a long time. So it's, it's kind of trippy to be back. And it's, it's kind of noisy as well, which is part of the reason I moved out of the city. We love this area because right across the street, which we'll see in a second, is High Park, which is, you know, arguably the biggest park in Toronto. If you kind of sneak peek up there, if you can, that second deck was our apartment. And we used to have uh, wheatgrass growing. Uh, we were big into raw foods back in the day. Did a lot of our own juicing and juicing wheatgrass. I'll just show you around the front of the house. So it was, it was one of these kind of houses, like there's five or six different units in there. So we lived here for, I don't even, to be honest, I can't even remember, maybe two years. We had a total of, I think it was like 700 or 800 square feet. It was a one bedroom. That was it. My office was the kitchen table. And I used to work from a, a $100 Ikea table from the kitchen. At the time, I didn't know what I was doing. I took some really awful advice. So I turned a lot of my workout programs into physical CDs. And I remember coming home one day and this front porch was porch to roof, floor to ceiling boxes. And then half our apartment for one year was inventory floor to ceiling. It was just nuts. So yeah, we lived here for I'd say about two years. And then, you know, like you're in a tight space, you want something different. I started envisioning, you know, bigger things and something different. And I wanna show you what that looked like. So let's uh, head back this way and I'll show you where the next unfolds. Oh, this car looks familiar. And that is not the car that I had when we lived here. So we're walking to um, this, the second place that my wife and I lived in together, that we were renting that place. We had, ended up buying uh, what I'm about to show you. But this is a walk I used to take on a daily basis. It was a really nice neighborhood to walk in. And I had these, these just these visions of what I wanted to create for my life. And, and one of the visions was actually the next place we're gonna, I'm gonna show you. Anyway, so I had this vision from like, I can't keep living here. I mean, I want more space. I want something bigger and better for myself and, and my future. So I started getting clear about what that would look like. And I used to take these walks. As you know, I love spending time in nature. Just spending time outside is really enjoyable for me. So we'd walk down the street. I'd walk down the street with my headphones on. I'd put on some meditation or visualization type of stuff. And I would walk, like I would walk every day and I would just look at the unit. I'm like, that one right there, that's mine. And I just kept doing that day in, day out, day in and day out. And lo and behold, the very units that I kept visualizing and kept seeing as if it was mine, eventually came on the market. And somehow, my wife and I made it happen, but I'll actually share that story with you in a second because it's not somehow. We busted our ass to make it happen and I think it's a really good lesson. So, but this was really cool because we always wanted to live in this kind of retrofitted factory type of loft. This is, this is our first purchase and it was, it was great. Like I, I, we, love, we love living here. I think we lived here for two years. The story behind how this came about was we didn't have the money to buy the loft. So we're like, we wanna buy it, how do we make it happen? And so we actually launched a program called the Total Wellness Cleanse. And we created this in order to not only help a lot of people, but hopefully pay for the loft. And so my wife and I ran this as a live program and we had enough people who paid us to be part of it. And that ended up becoming the down payment for the loft. And that's how it happened. I don't know if you know this or not. Like I, I jump in before I even know what the hell I'm doing. So this is an example of, <laughs> it's been a couple examples in my life of just make it happen. And we made it happen. And here's the thing that I've realized is like every single time you put yourself in these positions, it always works out. So I'm a big fan of like putting myself in situations that really stretch me and that really, you know, force the most out of me. It was like just being, when you don't have the resources, you have to be really resourceful. And this is an example of, uh, of making that happen. So yeah, it was, it was really cool. So this is, this is all like pre-kid era. This is like the days of dogs and coffee before the strollers came. Yeah, so this was the hood. All 
right, so we had a good time here. Get your mind out of the gutter. For about two years, uh, great lofts, you know, the typical kind of like concrete floors, all that good vibe. Um, but we were about to start a family at that, you know, two year-ish mark and the drywall between the units is fairly thin because it was concrete on the floor. You could hear a lot of stuff. People here generally don't have kids. And so we had to look elsewhere. And um, we didn't at the time have enough money to live in the city. To buy a house would have been way out of our budget. So we looked outside the city and we ended up moving to a small little town, which I'll show you, called Port Perry. And that's where we started having our family. So that was kind of the next step in our journey, but we'll get there when we get there. Is that Monique? Oh my goodness. How's it going? So yeah, here we are. This is where we, uh, we started our family. We, a uh, small town called Port Perry. So we actually never saw this house before we bought it. My mom saw the house and I trust my mom. So she's like, it's good, like cool. I'm like, all right, let's just sign off on it. And then we saw the house. We're like, um, I'm not too sure it's our vibe, our style, but you know, it was great for when it was. We walked in the house and it had like green shaggy rugs and we had to redo the whole house. We had to gut the whole thing. So that was cool. But it's, um, yeah, it's crazy. It's kind of surreal to see it like so many years later. Like this is, uh, I mean, our kids used to scooter around on this driveway. Yeah, uh, actually our kids locked themselves in the trunk of my car in that garage when they were like three and four years old. They thought it would be fun. <laughs> they got locked in the trunk. Uh, we just we just got to a point where it no longer really jived with uh, how we were growing as people and the, and the environments that we wanted to, to be in anymore. So we spent five years here and then we moved back to the city. So I would just say to my, to my younger self, good move, but just make sure that you constantly put yourself in environments that keep stretching you because it's very easy to get, you know, like we become our environment. And that's one of the reasons that we left here is that it wasn't the environment we saw ourselves in the future, but it was great, you know, for what it was at the time. It's that type of little town where it was super chill, super safe. You don't have to pay for parking anywhere, which was always nice. So favorite place? Right here. Hanks? You want to see the biggest donuts of all time? Hanks pastries. Yeah. You guys, just tell them here, I'm like, the that is the place. Oh, the apple fritters. Yeah, yeah I told you. No, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. Someone told us about it last time we were here, and I'm like, well, now I have one. Yeah, well, you have to have one. Yeah. I used to end up in a sugar coma, yeah. but yeah. They're, uh, they're almost as big as the ones in the window. This park over here is called Palmer Park. And what's interesting is because we help a lot of chiropractors, this is the birth, like this is where the person, uh, Dr. Palmer, who started the whole chiropractic profession is from. So you chiros out there, it's right here. So we're, we're sitting here in the park outside and quite honestly, I spent a lot of time in nature and I didn't have that luxury when I was working 16 hours a day as a personal trainer in a gym where I was underpaid, overworked. The ability to just come out here and sit at any point of the day without having to answer to anyone was very, very important to me and it still is. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to become an entrepreneur was to have the ability to do what I wanted, when I wanted, where I wanted, with whom I wanted and that, that freedom is really, I think, the driving force for me, at least, behind everything I've done. How's it going? We have drinks. And my go-to at Starbucks is iced passion tea lemonade and a sausage cheddar and egg, just in case you're wondering. I need to keep this warm. I just heated over the engine. So 
we're back in the hood. Uh, this is actually where we lived for five years. Beautiful area of Toronto. And so I'll show you the house. Uh, we'll have a little walk over. So we um, lived here for five years. Kids went to school down the street. And that house right there is our former house. And at the time, it was a new build. So it kind of looked like this before. And then they blew it up and then built something more modern. And when we saw it, it was just sticks and stones, right? It was like the, the bare bones and we couldn't make a lot of sense of it because it was all wood. And then we found that it was still on the market when they had listed it. And at the time I was like, oh my God, this is the place because we had seen inside and it was, um, it was just amazing. So yeah, so long story short is once again, this house, not exactly this but like the concept of it and like the, the look and feel of it inside was on our vision board so when we lived out in port perry we were ready for a change we wanted to come back into into a, like a little bit of a you know more upscale neighborhood and we had a vision for what we wanted to to create in terms of the house we wanted to live in so we had you know the vision board once again there's a common theme here i'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're getting so getting clear about what you want at least for me was very important the type of dining room bathrooms office space and so anyways, so this house was literally built. They lived in it for six months and then sold it. And we were the, the buyers of that house and it was amazing. So yeah, so we lived here. The garage right there was actually my gym. So we converted it into a gym. I did my cold plunges in the morning. We had our power rack in there, did all my stuff. And then that uh, front window there was where my office was. If you've seen any of my other videos, you might recognize this, this area, but that's the house. So yeah. Before we get hit by a car, we'll wait for the car to pass. I wanna share a quick little story with you about how this house came about. And again, some of the challenges, um, like I wanna share this journey with you because the, the physical stuff is really just like the, the manifestation of a lot of the growth that I've gone through personally, as well as our business. But a lot of what you don't see are the challenges and the sleepless nights and the anxiety and the worry and all that shit that you have to go through. So at the time, one of my companies, my, my actually my, my previous company was, we actually had it incorporated in Barbados. And when we had to put the down payment down for that house, the bank in Canada would not recognize the money coming from Barbados. I don't, even though it was the same Scotiabank that actually has Scotiabank and Barbados, they would not recognize the money coming from our corporate accounts in Barbados into the account here. And it was in the sum of hundreds of thousands of dollars. So imagine this, you're about to buy a place, you think you have the down payment for it. And then the bank is like, sorry, we don't recognize that money as if it were being traded from the cartel. And so again, just another obstacle, another hurdle to overcome. And once again, it worked out. Now, I don't have any hair. I lost all my hair when I was 17, as you know, to an autoimmune condition. But I, I think I might have lost it anyways in this journey. You know, like there's a lot of challenges, a lot of stuff you have to go through when you put yourself out there. And again, all we're I'm just talking about like some of the moves that we've had, right? I'm not even talking about the challenges in business and personally and health-wise. But I think it's it's important to recognize like everything is always working out for us. That's the one thing I've, I can always fall back on is like we're always being supported. All this shit that we're facing, it's all good, right? It's all helping us grow. And I wouldn't trade any of it. I wouldn't trade any of the sleepless lights, nights, any of the hardships, challenges, and we're just getting started. Like I'm, I'm gonna be here for a while, unless I got hit by that car, but. <laughs> hey, what's up? This is Layla. Welcome to the house. This is where we currently live, if you haven't figured out that piece yet. Just got home after a busy day. Layla is deaf. She's 14 years old, but she's still like a puppy. So I need to jump in the office to do something real quick, but I'm gonna show you the backyard first. This is Oscar, he's my oldest son. He's had a busy day. He's like, he was at camp all day. So this is our, our peaceful oasis. I spend a lot of time in the pool. I like to swim. 
I meditate, do some work on the lounge chairs in the morning. And then uh, I love, honestly, uh, looking at flowers. It's kind of odd to say that, but sometimes what I'll do is if I'm in a, a really kind of like go, 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 adrenaline type of mode, I'll come out here and this, actually I did this last night. I literally sat down in front of the lavender and I just stared at each piece of lavender, like really like up close. But yeah, so this is the backyard. It's the crib, outdoor crib. I love it. I love being outside. Uh, we only have a couple months <laughs> of nice weather. So I wanted to take you on this journey because we all go through a journey, right? Like you've been through a journey. You've been through where you were to where you are now. And no matter what it is you want, it's, in my, it's my belief that you can create it. Keyword is create it. And it starts with clarity. Clarity about maybe you're not happy with your current situation. That's a good starting point. Okay, well, what do you want instead? Spend some time thinking about that. If it's a house, if it's a better business, if it's a, you know, a physical transformation, it doesn't matter what it is. But I think if you spend time really getting clear on that, and starting to really piece together visually what that looks like. Like I've talked about like vision boards and stuff like that have been a really big piece of my journey. And it's really cool to look at those vision boards and be like, yep, check that off, did that, experienced that. And I think if you're creating a lot of value in this world and helping a lot of people and your reward monetarily allows you to live whatever you wanna live, then great. Building value, building wealth in the service of other people and it took me a long time to be okay with that. I was very weird with money for a long time. I didn't manage it well. I didn't, I didn't learn it. I didn't know about it when I was young. And I had a lot of resistance to selling and having people part with their money. So it took me a lot of work internally in my mindset to really understand that, hold on, like I'm actually helping this person fundamentally transform their life. I should get paid for that. And if you are in that kind of struggle as well sometimes, it's okay but I also want you to look in the mirror and really remind yourself like, you're bringing tremendous value to other people's lives. And I think if you're able to do that at scale, a lot of stuff is able to open up for you in life. And it's not gonna be easy, but I, I promise you, like the places that are hardest to get to are the most worthwhile, right? It's set big goals, go after them. It's worth the, the stress. Stress is good to some degree. Pressure is a privilege and it's 100% it's worth it. And it's, it never ends, right? We just keep growing, keep evolving, and we're on to the next thing. That's what high performers do, right? It's always like, cool, we got to this mountain, what's the next one? So hopefully this journey and you know some of the stuff I've shared with you has been um, inspiring and, and also just kind of letting you know that I was, <laughs> I started at the bottom and not that I'm at the top by any means, but I'm in a better place now than I was a long time ago. And you can be too, no matter where you are now. Those are my published books and then most importantly are these books here. Like these books are, and then I have a bunch on my Kindle as well. Just like a lot of mindset, business growth type of stuff. That's, that's the real education system, to be honest. And then obviously like getting into the real world and, and doing stuff. That's where I've learned the most. That's where I've made the most mistakes. Leaders are readers. The more you grow, the more you can give. The more you grow, the bigger you, the more you can receive. And um, if you're not growing, you're going, right? So not that I do this that often, but our media buyer is actually out for the rest of the day. It's a holiday in the States. So because I know how to run Facebook ads, I can pop into the accounts and do some pruning. We just launched a bunch of ads this morning. So I'm just popping in real quick before we head out to soccer and just making sure everything was within KPI. And I can't tell you how good it is to have that skill set because if you're always at the mercy of like other people, like agencies or media buyers, like they don't give a shit about your business, okay? Now I'm not saying our team is all internal, but our media buyer who's internal is currently out of the out of the pocket today. So I'm just popping in real quick. It takes me a whopping two minutes to prune and manage the ads and then I'm done. And then everything is running 24 seven on my behalf instead of me grinding away all day long. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know that the vast majority of our business comes from Facebook ads. We spend six figures a month profitably. It's not that complicated. When you know what you're doing, you know, if you're a client of ours, we teach you exactly what we do and it's a lot of fun. So yeah, we're all good. Everything's looking good. Everything's within KPI. And now we're off to uh, some soccer. Time for some BioSteel hydration. Okay. 
He gets to ride in style now. He'll be taking the bus soon enough. Had a nice little rally. We finished up here. It's a beautiful day. It's nice to see some some cool cars and some tanks. Something's about to go down, which you're probably not going to expect. So see those tanks there? We're going to run over all of these supercars in those tanks. 